Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hamilton, and today we're going to be going through the midterm and long term for Bitcoin here on the channel. Be sure to like the video. And before we do get into that, let's get on with the news. Breaking news in today's segment, we'll be diving into two major stories impacting the crypto market. We'll discuss the recent surge in XRP volumes on South Korean exchanges due to settlement hopes and the speculation around President Biden's dropout that has led to a slump in Bitcoin prices. Stay tuned to find out what these developments mean for the future of cryptocurrency. Our first story focuses on Ripple's XRP. Recent settlement hopes have pushed XRP volumes above Bitcoin on South Korean exchanges this week. This surge in recent trading activity reflects the growing optimism that Ripple might reach a favorable settlement in its ongoing legal battle with the SEC. For XRP, this could mean a significant price boost and renewed investor confidence if a settlement is reached. Will it though? Moreover, it could set a positive precedent for other cryptocurrencies facing regulatory scrutiny, potentially easing legal uncertainties and encouraging broader adoption. Next, we turn to Bitcoin, which has recently slumped towards 63000 as speculation intensifies about President Biden potentially dropping out of the 2024 election. Political instability often affects financial markets, and the crypto market is no exception. For Bitcoin, this uncertainty has led to increased selling pressure, reflecting investor concerns about potential shifts in economic policies and regulatory stances. In the broader crypto market, such political developments can lead to heightened volatility as traders react to the news. It's a reminder of how external factors beyond market fundamentals can significantly influence crypto prices. That's all for the news. Remember to subscribe, like the video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these stories. I will see you guys in the next video. And now back to you, TA Hamilton. Okay, thank you, News Hamilton. Let's jump straight into this. What should we start with here? Let's start with the markets. Okay, so uh, yeah, the markets right now, you can see that momentum has worn off. I would say they're, they're kind of neutral slash trickling down after this upwards wave right now, which is kind of what we expected. We talked about this yesterday, right? Um, this is this is nothing that's, that's kind of unexpected from my eight years uh, in the markets anyway, right? Uh, we are seeing a lot of coins actually uh, do various things here, as you can see. Uh, what are we on here? So got the 24 hour here a lot of coins are red over the past day but some of them such as mantle are actually uh, catching up here and banging it as you can see this chart on the left here just slamming it towards the upside mantle is okay but uh, a lot of other coins yeah just experiencing a bit of pullback here okay uh, we're seeing bit tensor up one percent as well it's pretty decent okay but enough of this all right this is the general sentiment anyway uh, people are kind kind of uh, watching this trickle down again and getting a little bit more scared. And we can see that uh, kind of demonstrated here by the fear and greed index going down just a single point here today to 60. So yeah, just pretty neutral across the board. Uh, we do have some updates on ETFs here today. Finally, they updated the chart. Thank you, the block. Finally, sir. Okay. Uh, and we can see here that, yes, uh, after we had those two, 300 million days from ETFs uh, with institutions banging it in, uh, we did get a 400 million. And then uh, recently, uh, two days ago, just a 53 million. But uh, this this looks a lot worse than it is, right? We are seeing lots of bullish inflows here, right? So uh, what, what are we looking at here? We're seeing one, two. Oh, oh wait. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight, nine inflows uh, that are positive in a row. Okay, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So uh, yeah, super bullish on that front. Okay, but besides that, yeah, we are looking at the markets right now and just seeing, yeah, this sideways kind of stagnant. Uh, people don't really know which way it's going to go. Also reflected on the on-chain here, pretty stagnant here in terms of electricity consumption. And then if we are looking at energy value here, that has come down a little bit as well. Was it 77.4 yesterday, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, and we can see right now currently it's 76.9 okay you guys know the deal with this one if we get above it super parabolic just just bang a, a thousand x long in okay don't worry about it just bang it in <laughs> all in thousand x long why not don't do that guys come on come on don't actually if someone actually does that based on me saying that just why just just why okay obviously i'm joking uh, but the, the point here being is yes if you if you do have like 100k or something like that then uh, yeah the time to bang it in for a 1x investment just a spot buy okay expecting 30% up to maybe 200% here uh yes um when we get above this line that's super important to do that uh, just from my experience and you can just see here the data backing it up all right so fantastic stuff there but looking at the liquidation heat map the heat map that shows where people uh, where price needs to get to liquid 
liquidate people, right? Uh, we can see that, yeah, it is just kind of messing around here. We targeted this one here at 100 million. Bang that bad boy, 100 million in the bag. Obviously not me, the market makers uh, did that. Uh, and right now, yeah, we are just playing inside this range. We do have a lot up here where people have decided to go short 100x here um, towards the upside. So maybe we do get uh, something towards the upside here. I do think it's more bearish right now. So I think what's likely, just, just a personal opinion here, guys, is probably a bull trap. Okay, so a massive, a big ridiculous pumperino towards the sky here up to about 65k and then uh yes it becoming a wick and then us coming down and liquidating the rest of these guys towards the downside that's pretty much it for the macro let's head over to the trading view chart right now okay we can see uh, as of as of right now on the macro we can see that uh yeah hash ribbons not looking so great today, as you can see here, right? So hash ribbon starting to look like a capitulation event is happening here. Uh, so just be aware of that. If this does curl over and we lose crucial support, i.e. 53,000, if we lose 53,000 here, guys, very bad for Bitcoin. I would just say we come down to at least 47, all right? And we do have trades lined up for that bad boy. And that is going to be fantastic if we can secure this one, right? A nice 8% trade, a beautiful stuff coming through there uh, for that five, uh, 5K to 100K challenge challenge. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's just see here. Let's just see what's going on. Uh, besides that, yeah, still in this neutral area between the four hour volume weighted ATR band and the three day. We have just tested the three day a couple times here. So we'll see uh, if this does actually smash through it or a bounce off of it and then reclaim that four hour before banging it up to the top side of this major downward sloping channel range. Okay, uh, as you guys know, you know what I'm looking for here, right, guys? I'm looking for money. I'm looking for money. And the money comes once we break this all-time high. If we break this all-time high, we'll have, we will have initiated a measure move here towards the upside, which will be about 74K. Bang that bad boy up for 11%. Easy, easy money here coming through. Um, what did we talk about here in previous video? This is the... My chart's changed. Oh, no, this is a different chart. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at... We were looking at this. Uh, this was our free Patreon trade here. Uh, we were talking about about. I got this on one account, guys, but I missed it on my copy trading account. Super annoying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did get this on one account here, uh, and it was a fantastic trade. You can see here a beautiful seven. Uh, it was roughly 1%, I think I got on this one, between 0.8 and 1%. I can't uh, remember just off the bat here. But yeah, the, the point here for this trade was very, very simple. We were looking for this momentum to break down. We broke this little bit of structure here coming through. We broke this low, more importantly, and then we bang that down to the next level, uh, the next kind of structural line here coming through. We have lost that line. So if we do want to repeat this again, there are a few things to talk about here. Okay. So uh, just be careful because uh, we do have this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. Typically, if this is a bullish uptrend, guys, what we will do is actually test this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band and curl up. Okay. Obviously, this is the event. So it's not really uh, super reliable, but we can see here as well. So these smaller lines, right? We can see when we do hit this 15 minute and it does want an uptrend, typically we bang it up from there. I'll just show you a better example example here uh, coming through right uh, yeah on the way up here as you can see um, over in May every time we hit this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band just absolute blasting blasting towards the upside uh, every single time so if it is bullish this is going to be one of the first signs all right the first signs if we are bullish is uh, if we do hit this you could actually say we've tested it already but uh, yeah no no massive pump yet okay but if we do hit this and it kind of curls up pretty much instantly over the next uh, kind of uh, over uh, over like a day afterwards, right? So if we hit this and then we start banging it up here, uh, then yeah, I mean, it'll be a fantastic sign. Um, there, there might be an opportunity to take a short here and that opportunity will only arise if we get this trap. Oh, God, what is going on with my chart here today? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I've been awake for like 14 hours here. I had to do a visa run today uh, or not a visa run, but like I had to go to immigration today. Right. So, uh, yeah, I've been up for a long time since 5 a.m. It's currently 7 p.m. OK, <laughs> so we're blasting through this. But uh, yeah, the, the point here being for this thing is uh, if we do break this trap zone and there's enough of a gap here, like a 1% area. So we're, we're targeting again from a 0.8 to a 1% trade. Um, 
towards the downside here. If we do lose this trap zone at any point, that's what we're really looking for. Um, but as of right now, if it were to lose it, I just don't think there's enough of a trade here. I mean, you could argue, you could argue there's enough of a trade here, but uh, I mean, you want to be breaking these lows around this level anyway. What I'm really looking for is a bit of an uptrend to form like so. And then once that channel is kind of confirmed, because we don't really have two hits on this top side of the channel yet, right? So once that channel is kind of confirmed, that's when we can start looking at this trap zone for that 1% trade. So uh, keep an eye on that one. Okay, uh, and instead of doing a free update today, that's basically the trade I'm looking for. So I'll just put that again in the uh, Patreon for you guys. Uh, if I mean, if, if you haven't watched this, then you'll watch it there. But I don't know why I'm telling you that because you haven't watched this. So I mean, yeah, just going around in circles there. But <laughs> what we're looking for here generally is that 1% trade. And you guys know the deal with the big Don Don Kerbinacci trade. Okay, we can see here uh, what we're looking for is losing this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. And when that does happen and we're having a crashing scenario, as you can see here, just ridiculous ridiculous gains to be made on a short here if we can find it. So uh, the reason why this short is so profitable if we lose this 15 minute uh, is because of this CME gap. You guys know the drill. All right, we talked about the CME gap before. The CME gap, if I do just get rid of this, right, uh, is where CME closed here, okay, and CME opened here on the Monday, right? Uh, a lot of money, as I posted in my Telegram here yesterday, a lot of money, like 60% of the money in Bitcoin and being traded in Bitcoin is in CME right now, okay? That's why it's the dominant force of the market, CME, and it doesn't trade the weekends. So the dominant force of the market uh, being the trend of the market, of course, um, yeah, if they're not trading weekends, then the trend on the weekend is less reliable. That's just, it's common sense when you think about it, right? So uh, what we're looking for here is for this gap to be filled. CME gaps do get filled, right? That's the kind of conclusional point here. Uh, so yes, and typically with Bitcoin, like 80% of the time, it does get filled in the next week. We're now on Friday. So uh, a couple things here, right? If, if we do find this short, fantastic stuff, it has to happen pretty soon, all right? Uh, but the other side here, the other side is is actually a, a bullish stance, right? It's not. It's less about a trade, but it's more about if we make a second CME gap this weekend, right? So this weekend, if we do actually start banging this up and we make another CME gap in this area, right? Uh, then it's actually a super bullish sign because it means uh, we're likely to go parabolic. Usually the only times where we, where we leave a CME gap for more than a week or two weeks here, guys, and make a second CME gap uh, and leave that, right, uh, for, for the remainder of a run and then revisit those levels uh, in the bear market, right? Uh, it's usually um, b before a massive run, okay? Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> so I'll just say this again, okay? Uh, when we make two CME gaps in a row, right? And then we blast off from there, then uh, we revisit those in the bear market. So if we get a CME gap this weekend, it's a great sign that we go parabolic. It's a huge sign that we go parabolic uh, if that happens. So just keep an eye on that one. Watch this intently over the weekend. I actually wanna get that back. There we go, beautiful stuff. Uh, watch this intently over the weekend because if we do make a massive CME gap towards the upside here uh, and we, we end up on the weekend over around 67K, then that's really, really bullish and that's something that you don't want to ignore. It's one of the first signs of us going ridiculously mentally parabolic uh, and it would be the time to start accumulating again, okay? Uh, but as of right now, what we're doing is looking for this short trade because we have no kind of indication that that's gonna happen yet, okay? Obviously, we've got the news, we've got the macro, but on chain still pretty flaccid okay uh, everything else still pretty flaccid uh, institutions are buying it of course but uh, that's only that's the only real sign here but besides that the momentum does look like it's wearing off so uh, what we're going to be looking for is that short trade to fill that cme gap uh, and then bang it and obviously we can't fill this over the weekend oh actually no we can fill this over the weekend i correct myself uh, what can happen over the weekend if like this is one of the only times in the weekend that we would probably actually target a short if we do start dumping over the weekend here guys uh, what will happen is uh, we will actually have a cme gap form uh, and then cme will open in this gap, right, potentially. And this is a rare scenario, but it can happen, okay? And then what will usually happen here, and this is super, super easy to trade when this happens, okay? If we do fill this CME gap, we will have another CME gap here, okay? So over the next week, we could expect to just come up. So this is two fantastic trades, right? A massive short over the weekend, right? And then filling that CME gap that forms over the weekend uh, over the next week for a massive long. So we're talking about really, really nice trades, a 4% towards the downside, and then potentially 
potentially a 4% towards the upside, depending on how things go. But uh, I do just want to say this is, it's not unlikely, but it's it's not likely, okay? I think what's more likely is we dump tonight, we fill the CME gap, and then, uh, yeah, leave everyone to speculate after there, okay? Uh, so again, the trades I'm looking for right here, right now, uh, is if we do kind of trickle up here over the next kind of eight hours, I would say, uh, then yeah, I mean, if we break this trap zone, we'll be looking for a 1% short down to 63.6, uh, down from 63.6 to 63, okay, for a nice 1% trade. And then over the weekend, if we do want to dump here or, or tonight, if we want to continue a dump, and this is like probably late into tonight, okay, um, for me anyway, I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there'll be another short here for 4%. So really shaping up to be a nice weekend here for us, uh, on Bitcoin in terms of an edge. So, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be targeting that promptly. Okay. What can we see here in terms of liquidations, in terms of open interest and volume, we can see we do still have that 10 X up there. This is why I said potential bull trap here, uh, before coming down makes sense. So potentially out to 68 and then absolutely obliterating here. Uh, if it is going to be the ball trapping scenario. Besides that, uh, yes, uh, typically, well, not typically, pretty much all the time we do like to uh, fill these areas, not fill the gaps, but fill these uh, liquidation levels are coming through based on open interest. So these are 10x liquidation levels. So if you took a 10x trade here, okay, when volume and uh, open interest went mental, okay, and as you can see, on the chart, there you go, beautiful stuff, that's open interest. So uh, yeah, when that happens, we do get those those big emotional trades coming through from some traders, and then uh, it opens up these uh, liquidation levels, right? So market makers will target those liquidation levels, and what this indicator does, it highlights those liquidation levels. So we have a massive edge on the market here, right? Uh, this liquidation level was formed um, <clears throat> around this level. Okay, 68k. So uh, hopefully, yes, we can, uh, well, well, it was formed around 60k. But uh, yeah, the level to liquidate them is at 68k. So uh, yeah, we'll be looking at that over the next week to see if they do want to target that and bring price up there. Uh, besides that, we don't really have any uh, towards the downside. We have some 25x ones. Okay, but besides that, yeah, I mean, yeah, not, not, not anything conclusive towards downside long term. Anyway, this is daily kind of kind of structure here. So uh, yeah, I think over the next week, it's quite likely we do come up. Uh, we're also testing this uh, 7SMA on the daily, as you can see here. Uh, so potentially a bounce here uh, is likely. Um, if not, I think we, we probably get that bull trap wick up here anyway. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, uh, those are the trades I'm looking for today. You, I'm not going to explain this again. Uh, feel free to just watch it again. But yeah, two shorts towards the downside and then potentially uh, some longs here if we do break this high at 66.2. Okay, but I think it will be quite a big move uh, and we will need to get above the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band as well. And this is why I think it could potentially be a bear trap just based on where this is right now. Okay, so uh, a bull trap, sorry, not a bear trap. So if we do get this massive aggressive pump up, I think it's quite likely that it gets faded very, very quickly. Okay. Okay, uh, just based on where these, these volume weighted ATR bands are. So that's going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. I know this was a super long video, but I wanted to go in depth. And uh, yeah, I have been rambling. But uh, <laughs> if you made it this far, be sure to comment. Comment this one word, okay? Comment one word. What's it, what's it going to be called? What's, what word should we go with today? Prime XBT, the sponsor of this video. Don't, don't, don't do that. No, that's, that's <laughs> I'm kidding. You can use it. You can use it. I've just messed this up. I've just annoyed my sponsor. <laughs> yeah, but Prime XBT is great in the comments if you've made it this far. Sorry, that was a bit cringe. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me. Be sure to like it, subscribe to it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.